you know, I'm not saying they're all evil like this, but the system itself is corrupt because look at how they are protecting this guy. And I can't believe that police around the nation aren't speaking out against this. Uh, I've, I've been reading the police blogs and news sites. They're making excuses. They're coming on Infowars.com and PrisonPire.com and the comments making excuses. And uh, this is an albatross around your neck. But poor Oscar Grant, you know, I... I mean, I imagine my children, my son, my daughters growing up in this country with this type of psychopathic police and a system that's so corrupt. In the past, once the videos came out in the past, they would have immediately charged this officer with something. But see, they just don't care now. What has happened to the government? What has happened to these agencies where they just don't care about anything anymore or what we think or what we say? Now, again... I have intended to have these audio blogs be a little bit calmer, more focused uh, view, you know, when I'm not on the air all jazzed up, but I can't help the second audio blog kind of being the old-fashioned Alex Jones because, because this issue, if this doesn't upset you, if this doesn't make you empathize with that family of this poor dead young man, this father, if you don't realize that if that can happen to him and then no justice be done, then that can happen to you, and it can happen in, in many other ways. This country is being taken. This country is being looted of $8.5 trillion. They're openly setting up a police state. They, th these foreign corporations are openly engaging in lawlessness. The laws are all for the people to oppress us. The laws are not for the police or the establishment or anybody in a uniform or anybody in the bureaucracy. And that's called classical tyranny. <laughs> but even a lot of classical tyrannies, they would go after this officer for doing this. This is just just off the charts insanity. So I, um, I'm going to probably call in to the Sunday radio show, 4 to 6 p.m. Jason Burmes is in town sitting in with, uh, for me for a few days while I'm out of town visiting family, but I'm probably going to call in and comment on this on the Sunday show or the Monday show because it's just so incredible. On a separate issue, uh, for those that don't know, carbon taxes, according to the UN's own documents, Club of Rome, CFR, and others, is a fraud. Uh, carbon footprint, greenhouse gas, all of this, they know that it's a fraud. But by listing carbon dioxide as a toxic waste and all other gases that animal life puts off, like methane, they can tax pigs, cows, sheep, chickens, regulate all that. They can ban your fireplaces, your space heaters, uh, soft drinks put taxes on beef. They're talking about putting taxes on the meat itself, not just the cow, but after it's butchered, after it's been taken into parts. They are talking about just taxes on everything because this is a carbon-based life form, carbon-based planet, and so it's a total way to regulate and control all commerce, all activities. Taxes on flying, taxes on driving, satellite tracker boxes in your cars. I mean, just, just, just thousands of things that we told you about over a decade ago that's now mainstream news. No more time to deny this is happening. <laughs> There's been a huge new horrible development in all of this. Uh, remember, six months ago I covered it. And you can just Google Rockefeller, David Rockefeller uh, fights with ExxonMobil and it'll come up. They don't like to talk about how Standard Oil in 1906 was broken in 12 parts into 12 oil companies that the family still owned and controlled, and, they, and then they could actually have the illusion of competition inside a monopoly or oligopoly and jack up prices. But I remember hearing NPR reports and, and reading the news reports where David Rockefeller, representing the family, the majority owners of ExxonMobil, and remember, ExxonMobil just merged five, six years ago. See, he's the majority of ExxonMobil because he was already the majority owner of Exxon and Mobil separately and ten other major U.S. oil companies. The Sermon Antitrust Act was a staged event, and David Rockefeller went into court because, remember, the head of ExxonMobil was saying global warming is a scam tax. It's being done by big elites to tax and regulate. This is going to be a tax on the people. We won't care. We'll just pass the cost on to you, but it's a scam. So you have fights within the elite. And uh, what the CEO's name, first name I know is, what was it, Rex Tillerson? So and I'm not saying he's a wonderful guy. The point is, is that he's just saying it's a fraud, which it is. And David Rockefeller went in, got control of the board, threatened all of them to remove them. This is on the news. If they didn't do what he wanted with his company, 
and the family's company, and it was in the news. And sure enough, today, ExxonMobil's come out and said, global warming's real, climate change is real, as if the planet's climate isn't always changing. We have to put these taxes on everything. We're for it. We're behind it. And they were the last big corporations to get in line. The NFL promotes it, movies, culture, everything is behind this hype. Right on time for Barack Obama to come into office and declare carbon dioxide a toxic waste. This is the same thing we've seen over and over again all over the world. And they've openly announced we will pay these major carbon taxes. The local ones will be on beef and soft drinks and fireplaces and, and banning light bulbs and banning certain types of toilets. Again, sounds good, but it's about setting the precedent that they tell you how to live your life and tell you what you can make and what you can do. Uh, they're announcing they're banning uh, sh people m making their own clothes or having U.S. companies selling it. It's got to be federal certified now. It, it's all controlled. They're rating people selling eggs on the side of the road, people selling watermelons. They're shutting down all grassroots activity. And only the big mega corporations can comply with all these regulations. But uh, I digress. Yeah, I'm just giving you a lot of data here. It's just so horrible to know this is all a fraud. And it's also meant to take all the, all the energy from the legitimate, well-meaning environmental movement that's concerned with genetic engineering, cross-species, toxic waste dumping, rainforest being cut down, indigenous peoples being killed. There's a lot of legitimate stuff, but it's all hijacked and all controlled by these groups that simply want to tax and regulate every facet of our life and then control the movement so that it doesn't ever actually go after something legitimate that would actually affect these multinational corporations that are openly setting up world government and saying we're going to buy our carbon taxes from them. So it's, it, it's Financial Times of London, AP Reuters all saying yes. Uh, Newsweek, you know, time for a world government banking system. And it says uh, that you'll have a world currency. Now, we knew that back in the 70s because it was a big Brzezinski, David Rockefeller, Jimmy Carter founded the Trilateral Commission in 74, and they publicly said that. They said, within 30 years, we're going to set this up. Well, here we are 34 years later, and they are setting it up a few years behind schedule. It's all there. So, again, uh, just a new age of dark age, a, a, a new dark ages of, of feudalism, regulation control. It's all covered in my film, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, for those that are interested and want to know more. And again, I just want to thank my crew and all you, the listeners, and I'm really excited to learn that um, folks liked that first audio blog I did, and I really appreciate um, folks doing that. You know, I've just got to take off some time or I never spend any real time with my family unless I try to completely take off. So I'm doing that this week with Jason Burma sitting in, but I'm going to be recording these and then uploading them uh, probably daily or, or several recordings, then every few days we'll upload them so I can comment on things as they develop. And if Israel attacks more countries uh, or if things widen, I'll uh, come back to town and uh, back to studio. But uh, Jason's there holding down the fort. Again, God bless you all, and thank you for, for tuning in. And again, I want to thank uh, Aaron Dykes for uh, his work with these audio blogs as well. As I normally do, I forgot to add one key point about the Oscar Grant being killed by this mad dog, Johannes. And that is that none of the mainstream media and none of the alternative blogs are pointing out that he's roughly handling him and, 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 and that he's begging for mercy, that the officer is roughly handling him and screaming at him and grabbing him and turning him over and getting in his face, and the person's begging for mercy after he's already been shot. I just wanted to point that out, just the fact that the media is not covering that, and I hope listeners can make this an issue. I, Kurt, I hope that Kurt Nemo and Paul Watson and Steve Watson, my writers, can put out a report on this and point out just this outrageous insult to injury, adding insult to injury. This is just completely over the top, and everybody needs to demand that uh, the mainstream media report on this and cover this because this takes it into a whole nother whole other dimension. And then, of course, the police and all their lies, just showing the whole systems involved in it and culpable. All right, that's it. Thank you.